Amen. I love the theme on today, laborers in his harvest. And we've heard the scripture read a couple of times. And what I'm going to do is read a couple of verses ahead of the initial uh, verse. And then uh, you'll kind of see where Jesus' heart is and why he said what he was saying. All right. So if we go to Matthew chapter 9 and go up to verse... 35, this is what it says. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them right. because they fainted. They were tight. They fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And then notice immediately after that in chapter 10, and when he had called into his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And then he gives the name. And then we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. So we see right off the bat, there is a reason why Jesus is calling for prayer for the laborers in his harvest. Amen. All these people were around Jesus. This one's pulling on him. That one's pulling on him. And even earlier in that same chapter, he had healed two blind men. The woman with the issue of blood was on the scene. He went to one of the uh, men's house to heal a daughter. Mm -hmm. and he, this stuff is happening everywhere. And he's trying to get more and more disciples out to make this beautiful harvest yeah. mm -hmm. of souls. Yeah. When I came in on this morning, I got here a little bit early and heard a little bit of the Sunday school lesson, and I heard Reverend Marlon say, it's all about winning souls for Christ. Yeah. And sometimes I think we forget about that. Yeah. In the midst right. of all right. that we got to do this, and we got to do that, and the kids got this, and my husband got that. Well, what about the souls? Yeah. Right. So Jesus yeah. is saying, this is the area I need you to pray in. Yeah. I need you to pray for laborers, not just talkers, <laughs> not just right. wannabes. Right. I need right. you to pray right. for laborers right. for his heart. Yeah. All right. All right. So something we got to remember about a heart. You got to plant seeds yeah. right. mm -hmm. to get a harvest. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot right. about planting. I'm an urbanite. I didn't grow up on the farm. But my dad did. And my dad was always using our backyard. Come on here, somebody. Uh -huh. right. Right. It's somewhere where he could do some planting. Right. We love fresh tomatoes. Yeah. We used to pick tomatoes off the vine, sprinkle a little salt on them, and eat them right out the yard. Amen. 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 But my dad believed in using seeds, planting seeds for uh -huh. harvest. Yeah. Number one, you get good, nutritious food. Amen. And it's cheap. Come on here, All right. All right. All right. So another thing I noticed about a harvest, one must be willing to wait for the harvest. Uh -huh. yeah. So when you plant the seed, don't yeah. look at it every day. Because right. <laughs> nothing's yeah. coming up. Me and All my right. little sisters, All I got right. four little sisters yeah. behind me. Every day, was, Daddy is not, Daddy said, just walk away. Just uh -huh. don't even look at it today. Yeah. Don't look at it next week. <laughs> but I guarantee you, a harvest is coming. Right. Right. All right. All right. And soon them great big red tomatoes, because he had to stop us. Don't pick it yet, leave it alone. It's still green, but I found out about fried green tomatoes. I'm not going there right now. But I found out some things watching my dad plant seeds in the harvest season. Right. And one must plant seeds in an environment where the seed can grow. Yeah. So my dad knew he had to do something with the ground, fertilize it a little bit, yeah. make sure it got plenty of rain and sun. So he, he never planted it on the side of the house. 
Right. Uh -huh. Because on, on the side of the house, it was two houses. The house here and the house right there. And it wasn't enough sunshine right, right in here. So my dad knew where to plant the seed. And then we must remember that most likely, you're going to get more than what you're planting. Come on. So right now, maybe the Lord is recruiting laborers in his heart. Right now, maybe he's looking for those who have qualifications and are willing to be laborers in his heart. Right. I don't think, now you, you may, you may uh, uh, disagree with me here, but I don't think he's concerned about what our IQ is. Yeah. All right. I don't think he's concerned about our educational knowledge as far as how many All right. degrees All right. I had that day. I don't think he's concerned about the economic status or about what our address is or what type of car we drive. To be laborers in his heart. Sure, he knows all that information about us, but to be a laborer in his harvest, I don't think these are mainstream activities that he's going to inquire about. He may not be concerned about the color of our skin or the color of our hair or how long our eyelashes right. are. Right. Come on here, somebody. Right. Right. We right. might not be concerned about our height or our size right. or the clothes size and right. the shoe size. Right. Maybe he just wants labor. Period. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. He might be looking for those who function with the fruit of the spirit. I don't uh -huh. know. All Maybe right. love, joy, yeah. peace, goodness, <laughs> All kindness, All right. gentleness. All right. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Self-control. Self oh. Patience. Uh -huh. That might be what he's looking uh -huh. for. Uh -huh. The Lord might also be looking for those that he mentioned in his word. He said, that you have to love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, and your soul. He might be looking for somebody that don't just talk about love, right. but that really love him. Somebody that loves him when the weather's cold or uh -huh. hot. Somebody that loves him when things are bad and when uh -huh. things are good. All right. I still love him. Those that are able to love God when a loved one dies or when a human yeah. one is born. Yeah. Someone that's able to still love God when yeah. you get cussed out. Yeah. Still. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Maybe that's part of what he's looking for as a laborer. He may be looking for those that can hear the word and obey his word. A lot of us used to be able to quote a lot of scriptures, but we could cuss. Oh, 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 all right. You should be able to bless and cuss at the same time. That's what the word said. I, I had to adjust to the word because, like I said, I'm an urban man. I'm from the hood. Come on, here, uh -huh. all right, all right. <laughs> you cuss me. I cuss you. But the word said. <laughs> Place and, right, and there was right. no roots that were right. formed, and, and rocks blocked the roots. And mm -hmm. then there was thorny places, weeds 
choked so out the roots right, that right, was planted. Right. And, and then there was good soil, uh -huh. and it produced 160, 30 times yeah. more uh -huh. than what was expected. And he said, now I want you to realize the ground, this soil that I'm describing is your heart. Uh -huh. Boy, right. it messed me up real uh -huh. good. And, right. and Jeremiah said, the heart is desperately really wicked. wicked and no man know. can know it. So that right. means I got to be like David and pray, Lord, Lord create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit. I had the wrong spirit come All right. on here All right. All right. All right. Yeah. And if I'm not careful, it gets wrong again. All right, all right. I yeah. God, yeah. regular yeah. basis, to keep my heart clean yeah. and to have a right spirit. All right. All right. So some, some might say, well, you know, I've just always been like this. And uh -huh. my mama was like yeah. this. Yeah. My auntie was uh -huh. like this. And, and boo was like this. But look. <laughs> We're supposed to be like Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. we, should be, we were made in the image of God. Uh -huh. So I had to eliminate all of my excuses for why my heart wasn't right and start working on getting my heart right. The first thing I had to do was forgive everybody that made me me. All right, all right. They mistreated me, they abused me, and I'm right. I don't care what nobody said. I had to work on me. I had to forgive me. I heard somebody say, uh, 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 no need sweeping around. You got to sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. So what does that mean? I got to stay out of your business and what you want to do and take care of There you go. All right. All right. I, I All right. Time yeah. to criticize yeah. you when I, I got, got work to do. I got too much junk in me and I got to work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 I'm just talking about that. Right. 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 So pack down. Pack down yeah. anger. Pack yeah. down frustration yeah. and tiredness. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not putting yeah. up with it anymore. Yeah. And those were seeds that was on that hard ground yeah. never did take root and eventually the birds came and ate it up yeah. meaning the devil came and what little bit of god was there come yeah. on here yeah. Yeah. the right. word that got there right. just for a little bit because everything was happening that person didn't last long because stuff happened you know yeah. i always say all the time life yeah. happens yeah. And then there was no rocky, there was the rocky place uh -huh. where there no roots could grow. And you've seen rocky get, uh, gravel and all that. And it's hard to grow grass in those areas. You literally have to move the rock right. from yeah. off the dirt yeah. and yeah. then till that yeah. hard yeah. dirt. Yeah. 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 yeah, You have to put yeah. a little yeah. fertilizer. Yeah. You know what yeah. fertilizer yeah. is, yeah. right? Yeah. Fertilizer stinks. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Come on here. But fertilizer stick, you go through enough dirt in your life and allow that dirt to minister to you to be what God wants you to be, then we can grow and be a part of that good ground. Finding places, weeds are choked you out. And a lot of times the thorns sit right in the church. Amen. Right? right? You know, I'm not calling no names. I mean, it's, it's not done in this church. But they said there was 40 places. And they said they all grow right there together. They all grow right there together. Amen. And so that a brand new soul may come into the church and they're excited about the Lord. And they come to the Bible study and they're learning the scriptures and they're getting a prayer out life. And all of a sudden, one of the bad attitudes hit them in the face. All right. Off guard. And now they're thinking about, I don't know why I even came to this church. And people on the outside are quick to say, I don't know why you go to church anyway. Uh -huh. So I'm excited over yeah. this lesson on today. Yeah. 
that we even in the thorny places uh -huh. you can still survive. Yeah. 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 What right. 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 said right. this morning. Ooh. There is no such thing as a perfect church. Uh -huh. Everywhere you go, you got imperfect people. Amen. Imperfect church. Yeah. So you got to learn how to hang. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. You got to learn how to hang. All right. What do you mean by that? Whether they got a good attitude or bad Not, attitude, yeah. you stay there. Yeah. Whether they got good no uh, yeah. spirit, right. bad yeah. spirit, you stay yeah. right there. Yeah. Whether they got a good heart yeah. or a bad heart, you stay right, right there. Right. And let the Lord yeah. bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Then it talked about the good soil, and I'm going to move rather quickly. Said it produced crop 160 and 30 times more. That's where I want to be. I want to be that good soil. Right. So I'm going to talk about now, uh, there is a, a, a second piece to my message on today, and it's called the unsung missionary. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard of unsung heroes, and those are people that have done great things, and they really didn't get credit, credit for it. Nobody right. really knows about it. They think special. So I want to talk about, just for a few minutes, some, a couple, I, I have three unsung missionaries in the Bible. All right. And so the first one is a woman. I have three. One's a woman, one's a man, and one's a lad. So it, it, it may encompass a little bit of all of us in, in, in one or two of these examples. Unsung missionaries. And so a missionary is just someone who has a mission yeah. and a purpose. Right. and then accomplishes that mission. Well, right. It's well, not well. just about a particular day at church. Right. A mission is a task yeah. that is given to you by God. Yeah. Yeah. That's your mission. Yeah. You understand what the mission is. Right. He gives you a strategy right. how to do the mission, and then you accomplish the mission. All right. All right. So here is our first candidate for an unsung missionary. Mm -hmm. So this person uh, is the woman at the well. And at first glance, I guarantee you, uh, she is not looked at as a candidate to be a laborer. All right. Or a missionary for Christ. Mm -hmm. She's a Samaritan, which means she's anti-Jew. They didn't really get along because mm -hmm. Uh, the Samaritans were actually mixed. They were, yeah. they were mixed yeah. with Jews. And, right. uh, uh -huh. So they didn't like that. They want you to be pure over mm -hmm. here. And so mm -hmm. They didn't have much to do with yeah. each other. Right. Yeah. And uh, she came to the well during the day, which was unusual because usually the woman would come in the evening yeah. and she would always come by herself. Right. And, uh, and so her whole story is odd to me. But how in the world would she ask Jesus, uh, would Jesus ask her to give mm -hmm. him some water? Mm -hmm. Well, that, 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 that yeah. kind of threw me right out the back because Jesus had told the disciples earlier, don't go to Samaria. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, in fact, right. I want you to go to the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. But he ends up, because he says with his own mouth, I must needs yeah. go. To uh -huh. Samaria. So uh -huh. He goes to Samaria. Uh -huh. That's all right. And so they start this conversation. And uh, he <coughs> asked her for this drink. And she eventually tells him that, you know, how are you, a Jew, going to ask me, a Samaritan, for a drink of water? And he hurried up and said, Well, if you knew, if you had asked me, if you knew who you were talking to, okay. if you had asked me, and, Mm -hmm. uh, I would have given you water. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the conversation went on. Jesus was very good at his ability to persuade All right. and encourage. Because yeah. uh -huh. this woman really, I believe, had no intention uh -huh. of giving Jesus any water. Uh -huh. And uh, eventually, uh, he so enticed her with his, his words that eventually he said, now if I... If you drank the water, that he said, God, this water, you can drink this water. He said, but you're going to be thirsty again. But if you drink the water that I have, you'll never thirst again. Right, right. fact, it'd be like a well bubbling up in your spirit. Now, that got her attention. And, uh -huh. and she goes, wow, well, wow, you, you, you are the, 
you got it going on in so many words. I'm just uh -huh, kidding. Uh -huh. And so I, I want some of that water. And then Jesus is so shrewd. He goes, go get your husband. <laughs> <laughs> and so the woman is like, uh, well, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a husband. And so Jesus is so smooth. He goes, you're right. You have five husbands. As a matter of fact, the one you live right now is not your husband. Well, it's interesting that this woman is at the well talking to Jesus, and he brings up husbands. When it's a water situation, All right. husbands come uh -huh. into this. Now, you got to remember, in this culture, women were not allowed to give a certificate of divorce. Yeah. Only men. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. So she had been rejected by five different husbands. Wow. That's the story. So in other words, this is a hurting woman. And, and a lot of times, and the scripture doesn't say this, a lot of times, it doesn't say it at this particular place in the Bible, but in the Old Testament, it talks about if women could not bear children, they were automatically yeah, right. considered cursed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we don't yeah. know if that's the case or not. All we know is she had been rejected by five men. She's living with another man right now who looks like isn't interested in marriage. Mm -hmm. With all of that being said, this is a hurting woman. Yeah. Uh huh. But it's interesting to me that God would pick a woman that has been uh, rejected by five men and say, I must needs go to Samaria. So not only am I breaking tradition of races and religion, I'm also breaking traditions of gender. And I'm also breaking tradition of who talks together and all of that. It just blows me away. This woman is so taken by Jesus and she had asked him earlier, she had told him, her, you don't have nothing to draw with. You don't have nothing to draw with. But anyway, she gets to the end of this conversation with Jesus, drops her water pot, and runs to the city. And instantly becomes a missionary. Her mission is identified. Now she has purpose. A man has spoken into her life. And now she has hope. The scripture said all the men, many of the men in the city came to the well uh -huh. to hear and find out about this Jesus. And when you read it uh, on a little bit further, it even says that after a while, they just wanted to come to hear for themselves. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Right. About this Jesus. Right. This unsung yeah. missionary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We never get a name for her. Nope. We never get a position for her. All, right. All we know is she's a woman at the well. Right. For every woman who's ever been rejected, Jesus must have needs to be with you. For every woman that ever cried a tear and feels like they can't make it another day, just know that Jesus knows your every song. He can heal any situation and heal anything going on in your body, mind, or spirit. This woman had to have been depressed at one time or another. I think many times in the scripture we've given her the wrong uh, uh, characteristics because it looks like, oh, you didn't have five other also, you that kind of woman. Well, when you go back and see what divorce was all about in uh -huh. that culture, it gives different. you a different picture. Yeah. Uh -huh. For every woman that thinks you're too bad and Jesus can't handle you, he can handle you. Yeah. All, right. All, right. all right, let's go to the next unsung hero. The next unsung hero is um, a young man in, in John chapter 6, verse 9. We find a boy who has five small loaves of barley bread mm -hmm. and two fish. Mm -hmm. The only food available when there was a need to feed over 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. A lad, a child, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. only had five loaves of bread and two fish. All right. mm -hmm. Jesus asked Philip in this particular scripture, he asked Philip, so um, uh, you want to go and get, get some bread? You, when you go back and read, you'll see exactly what he said. And so Philip is going, well, uh, it'll take half a uh, half a year's yeah, yeah. salary yeah, yeah. to feed all these people. Right, right, right. But Philip and them had been with Jesus. How come they, they couldn't realize that this is the uh, one who can do miracles here? Mm -hmm. But Philip didn't catch on and, and neither did the other disciples. And so eventually one said, well, okay, here's this lad. He has fish and bread. Uh -huh. It's amazing to me. The lad gave up his food. Uh -huh. You never hear him say, can, can I have one fish? Uh, you can have everything, just give me one load of bread. Nothing. The lad just gives it all up. Right. Because of his sharing, uh -huh. the whole congregation, and if you read a little bit further, <laughs> it was 5,000 men, but often included with the we men were the women and children. Yeah, right. Right. And so it's amazing to me that this is an unsung hero, right. an unsung missionary. He had a mission, he right. had a purpose, right. and it was done by uh -huh. him taking care uh -huh. of Jesus by giving up his love. Mm -hmm. my, my, my last unsung hero or missionary is a man who absolutely would not qualify to be a missionary. In Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. He is not known by the name of his mother or father. He is only known by the number of demons that he possessed. Right, right. He did not live at home. He lived in a grave area. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And he did not sleep at night. According to the scripture, all night he would cry and cut himself with stones. He was so strong with all of these legions of demons mm -hmm. that nobody could tame him or chain him. Every time they chain him up, he'd get a loose. Mm -hmm. You know the story how that Jesus told him to come out and the legions came out. They, uh, they first came and worshiped Jesus. And a lot of times it's interesting to me that demons worship Jesus. Amen. Amen. And sometimes uh -huh. we don't. Amen. Uh -huh. All right. Amen. But it's interesting that the demon came, the demons came to Jesus uh -huh. and worshiped him. And eventually Jesus said, Go, and they went and got in the pigs. And this young man, or however old he was, wanted to do one thing. He wanted to go with Jesus. Uh -huh. He wanted to be a part of that group that movement that was making a change in Israel right. and he wanted to be a part of that it looked good to him and so he goes Jesus right. can I go with you and immediately Jesus that Jesus gave him a note in yeah, fact yeah. this is what Jesus said he said no I don't want you to go with me what I want you to do is go home uh -huh. right. and share yeah, what great right. things yeah, God has done for you. Yeah. Right. He's an unsung missionary. Right. Yeah. All right. He went home. He was obedient. He didn't get mad right. and pout. Uh -huh. right. Amen. All right. He went home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And many men and women in the city heard about when they saw him, knew yeah. what great things God yeah. had done for right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And unsung. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for all of us that may have children uh -huh. that looks like they're full of demons yeah. and they're never going to get free. Wow. This story gives us great hope. Uh -huh. Because Jesus can go right there right. and deliver them yeah. right. at any time. Yeah. 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 Nobody knew that this young man was going to one day be a missionary yeah. for Jesus Christ. Right. Uh -huh. He went all the way back home. He, hold on, he hold on. left out the grave site yeah. Yeah. went back into the city uh -huh. and had his clothes on. Yeah. He walked right. Yeah. He was talking right. Uh -huh. He had a whole uh -huh. new dimension. Uh -huh. All right. I'm about business. All right. I'm on a mission. Uh -huh. I got to tell somebody about Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus uh -huh. freed me. Yeah. Uh -huh. He cleaned me up. Uh -huh. yeah.
something on tonight yeah, about laborers yeah. in his heart. I, yeah. uh -huh. I told you about we might want to have the fruit of the spirit uh -huh. of a clean heart. Yeah. But what's so encouraging to me is if we're not perfect yeah. and none of us are, uh -huh. we can still obey Jesus right. and right. be a missionary. Amen. 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 Amen.